lab we did was the patient to remember it. Here are the major points that you need to know. The patient to remember it. The first thing we should know is what the definition of diffusion is. Diffusion can also be referred to as passive transport. Remember, with passive transport or diffusion, we're talking about molecules moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. It's kind of like going downhill. So if we were to draw a diagram to represent this, you would start off at the high point and then go to the low point. And that means that you're going in a direction like this. Since it's like riding a bike downhill, that means that you're not using any energy. Remember, our fancy name for energy is going to be ATP. If we refer to the diagram, look at the blue dots. The blue dots are supposed to represent different particles. In the first section, you can notice that there is a high concentration outside of the cell. It's a high concentration because there are lots of blue dots. Inside of the cell, there are actually no blue dots. Since there are no blue dots, that would be considered a low concentration. Molecules want to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. As time goes on, you'll notice that that continues. Blue dots go from a high concentration to a low concentration. Eventually, you have it so that there are equal numbers on both inside and outside of the cell. This last picture is going to represent something called dynamic equilibrium. It's called dynamic equilibrium because the particles are equal on both sides. Now, equal does not mean that they've stopped moving. Actually, what's occurring is that for every particle that goes into the cell, one particle goes out of the cell. The next topic that we need to know about in terms of diffusion is going to be molecule size. There are large molecules and then there are small molecules. Large molecules cannot diffuse across the membrane. Why is that? That's because there are pores. Those pores are tiny. Those large molecules cannot fit through. Examples include starch, proteins, and fat. Starch is going to be one of the most important ones that you are going to refer to. That's because it was actually incorporated into the state lab. The other molecules that we're going to look at are small molecules. Small molecules can diffuse across the membrane. All three of these are going to be important examples. But in this case, we're going to look at glucose, and we are going to look at iodine. Referring to the diagram on the bottom, you'll note that it has starch and glucose inside of the artificial cell. We did this in our lab. Outside of the cell, we have iodine. You should probably make note of the colors that we saw. Outside of the cell, remember iodine was an amber color. Inside of the cell, where we have starch and glucose, it was a clear or milky white color. We then allowed for we then allowed for about 20 minutes to pass by. As we allowed those 20 minutes to pass by, diffusion occurred without us actually doing anything. We didn't have to apply any energy. Looking up at our examples of starch, glucose, and iodine, we want to make a hypothesis as to which ones we think are going to be able to diffuse. Draw where you think starch, glucose, and iodine will be located 20 minutes later. All right, first one we're going to look at is the iodine. Iodine, if we refer up to the top, is a small molecule. Since it's a small molecule, that means that it's going to be able to pass through or diffuse across the membrane. Notice that it's also inside of the artificial cell now, not just outside. The next one we're going to look at is glucose. According to the information above, glucose is a small molecule. Since glucose is a small molecule, it too is going to be able to diffuse across the membrane. So now, not only is it inside of the cell, but it's also outside of the cell. Last one we have is starch. Starch is going to be what is a large molecule. A large molecule cannot pass through the cell membrane. Therefore, starch is only located inside of the artificial cell. Does anyone remember what happened to the cell since iodine got in? Well, since iodine got into the cell, it has actually now changed color. It's now going to be a blue-black color. The outside of the cell remains the same color. The outside of the cell is going to be an amber color. 
That's how we know that starch stayed inside of a cell. Why did that cell, though, turn blue-black? Well, that's because iodine and starch mix. We looked at two different indicators in this lab. The first indicator was iodine. Sometimes they'll refer to it as the starch indicator solution. When you have starch and iodine together, the original color is amber. But once you add the two, it turns to blue-black. Look at the diagram on the right, which shows us exactly what our setup looked like. We had that artificial cell, and then eventually that cell went from a whitish color to a more blue-blackish color. Then we had Benedict's solution. This is the part people always forget about. We had Benedict's solution and glucose. We added the two together, and it was still blue. Then we had to use a hot water bath in order to heat it up. When we heated it up, it turned orange. The diagram to the right shows you what happened. We had water and Benedict's, or you could even just say glucose and Benedict's before heating. And then after heating, you'll see that it turned to this nice burnt orange color. The last part of the lab had to do with osmosis. And we looked at the red onion cell. Remember, we had to get that red onion cell really, really thin in order to see it underneath the microscope. They show two pictures on the bottom. The first picture is what it actually looked like. More, than, more likely than not, you're not going to see that picture. They're probably going to show you an illustration more similar to the one on the right-hand side. But we have A and B. Let's go over some of the facts, though, before we actually look at that diagram in more detail. First thing we have is what is osmosis. Osmosis is simply the diffusion of water. If you're on the fence if you use the word osmosis or if you use the word diffusion, always go with diffusion because diffusion will always be correct, whereas osmosis only applies to the diffusion of water. So why do those cells look different? Why in the first picture, if you look over to the left, do all of those cells look really, really plump? And then if you look over to the right-hand picture of the actual onion cell, you can see a lot of that purple has gone away. What caused that? Well, those cells were most likely put into a salt water solution. So why does that happen? Well, salt water actually has very, very little water. Since it has little water, that's going to be considered a low concentration. That causes the water to move out or to diffuse out of the cell. Let's look at the actual diagram that would be on the screen. We look at A and we look at B. We need to be able to label where the cell wall is, where the cell membrane is, and then where the cytoplasm is. This is frequently on the exam, so it's important that you know exactly where they're located. This should be an easy point. First thing we have is the cell wall. The cell wall is represented by those black lines. Remember, the cell wall is actually never going to move. The next thing we have is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is located right inside, really, really close to the cell wall. The last part we have is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is all the liquid inside of the cell. After you added that salt water, which the arrow is supposed to indicate, what happens? Well, you'll notice we're looking at the same exact group of cells, but they look very different. Well, that's because the cell wall has actually stayed in the same exact spot it was originally. But what happened to that cell membrane? Well, that cell membrane pulls away. It pulls away because the water moved out of the cell. The last thing we have is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is all the gray matter that's left behind. Last thing that we need to know, how do we add that salt water to the slide? Remember, we wanted to look at the same exact cells each time to see exactly how they change. Well, if you look at the diagram, this does a good job of explaining what we did. First thing we did was B. So look at B. We took a paper towel, we placed it on one side of the cover slide. That little rectangle, that's what we call that, a cover cell. Then A, A actually had salt water inside of it. That salt water, we used an eyedropper to apply the salt water, and then the paper towel 
but the water that was leaking under the cover crop was sucked up. Now, instead of having regular water underneath the slide, we have salt water under the slide. And that's it for diffusion through a membrane.